What is going on my Masketeers? Welcome back to another episode and we are here to talk about Woman King. Oh my god, my god. Listen, just right off the bat, you already know what it is for me. I'm telling you, this film here was nothing short of amazing. I'm saying it from the beginning and I will give you a little breakdown of how I got here. Honestly, this film, amazing. Just amazing. Everyone that did their thing from, obviously, without question, Viola Davis, man. She is a powerhouse and she carries this movie, but there's so much talent around that everywhere I look it was just chef kiss magnificent John Boyega man this guy in this role as like the young king amazing 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 it was his freaking all female unit of bodyguard the inspiration behind the Dola Milaje from Black Panther and Wakanda this is really Wakanda forever the real thing the one that started it all they are basically the Agoji now the Agoji are basically an all female military unit that were the protectors of the kingdom of Dohemi, which is current day Benin. And so the story takes place like in the 1820s. We have Viola Davis's character, Naniska, and she's the general. And essentially the film in and of itself is the kingdom fighting a war on two fronts, taking care of their, or going to war, sorry, with their enemies of the Oya empire, but then also fighting against the Europeans who have been using the slave trade to amass wealth and grow their empire and the thing is again the film has a very hard task because it has to try and walk the line of dealing with slavery during a time when slaves were being sold and bought but they were being provided by Africans by this point slavery had been going on for quite some time within Africa and although it began with them coming stealing and kidnapping people because it was not stopping and it was going on and on and on you then found that other African tribes started supplying slaves to the Europeans but how they would do it is they would conquer neighboring tribes take their people as captive and then sell them and get goods and do trade and so again you enter into a very weird twisted ecosystem to where the Europeans would offer them guns offer them supplies for people and so even if you and your tribe didn't believe in slavery your enemies would so it would be a case of where they would go and take the Europeans offer of oh if we bring you slaves you're going to give us more weapons you're going to give us more supplies and all this other stuff all right cool we can use it to grow our empire so then it becomes a whole situation of oh i need to get a bigger gun because they got a gun so it just keeps on escalating and rising but anyway because of that the film has to you know navigate that and i feel it did it quite well this is one thing which i'll say because a lot of people have been trying to you know say that this film is changing history and it's whitewashing certain things here's the thing this film it is not a biopic let me just say that off the bat it's not a biopic it is inspired by true events meaning that they have taken events in history and then they've worked a story around it it is not a de facto history biopic it's not that absolutely not it's like Braveheart Braveheart is not a biopic it's a historical drama it's based off people that existed situations that happened but then you've made an entire fictional film around it yes some bits might be true but a lot of it not so much look at it like Braveheart it is the exact same thing William Wallace was a real man but half the stuff in that film did not happen in real life so with that being said let's get back to how great this damn film is now let me talk about the stars the ladies the absolute queens and the person for me the standout the standout without question it has to be Lashana oh Lashana Lynch my god her character here yeah, is um Izogi listen I love I love her because again she was amazing she not only looked good but she moved good oh Oh, she was a machine an absolute machine because the thing is right even in the beginning it opens up with them going and retrieving some of their people that were kidnapped the way they come out the grass it literally looked like national geographics when the lionesses come out the grass when they come into hunt and as soon as they come out like they're all oily and when i first saw that i was thinking to myself wait a minute hold on why are they covered in oil kind of thing i was like you know most action movies you always have like the action stars covered in oil and i thought oh my god they're gonna a little bit extreme with the oil here but even that they explain you find out that during their training because they wrestle and they have to do close quarter combat they actually cover their bodies in palm oil and the reason why they do that is so that they're hard to grab and i thought to myself that is such a cool thing very small but it's so crucial because again these are women like they utilize their speed and their agility they don't base their fighting style on pure power it's all about speed precision and being 
nimble again because they cover themselves in palm oil when they come in close for close quarter combat it's very hard for the men that they're fighting to hold them and i just thought to myself okay movie you got me man you got me and let me just say this like john boyega's character because he plays like the young king who essentially has so much pride in his people and he wants better but the thing which i love so much about his character is he's a man caught between two worlds he's a man that believes in honest tradition but he's also a man that looks to the future and with that being said he does not make any delusions about how europeans see him and his people and he uses that to his advantage he wants his people to thrive but he's also aware that when he makes certain decisions and makes certain moves it could cost him so he's very strategic so even though he's young he's wise and i really like that and like the air of dignity that he carries within himself here yeah, i was feeling it and his little his little um situation like with his multiple wives one bad neither <laughs> <laughs> let me say that but within every good situation you always find that there's going to be somebody that's trying to throw a spanner in the gears and that was one of his wives one of his wives yeah she was moving out of pocket she was literally stepping above her station and punching beyond her body weight and i was just like yo this woman is gonna cause a madness and you know what they say whenever whenever you want to bring a man down you know it's his woman that will do it let's not draw on that too much with all of that being said let me get into the good of this movie the good like i said the acting phenomenal cinematography the action and the choreography are so on point so on point man like these women look well oiled machines no pun intended but they were literally so good they were so good honorary mention when i saw her i thought wait is that who i think it is a woman who goes by the name of the samurai um on instagram she has been a martial artist she is an action or should i say somebody that does stunts and so to see her go from being on instagram showing off her martial arts skills and her bow stuff skills and her knives and her weaponry to seeing her like in a movie to where again she was born to play this kind of character i know that she was in black widow but in black widow you didn't really even get to see her that much here i got to see her in her full glory and it looked amazing but yeah it was just really cool to see how far she's gone really proud of her and like she's you know again somebody that just started from putting her videos online showing her skill to to the point of now like she's in big hollywood blockbusters so i have to literally pick her up for that now back to more of this good let me say this viola davis here yeah, is never going to be another woman no but another woman there's never going to be another actor of her caliber she carries this film and she's, she's able to show so many layers and levels man honestly even though she's a general and she's hard and she's tough there is a vulnerability to her but then the vulnerability is not even weak that's how crazy it is because she always has to be strong you can constantly see her fighting through her own pain to keep moving forward i love that she never becomes a victim of her circumstances she just keeps on pushing she keeps on pushing regardless that is amazing to watch very few can pull it off because like i said she gives you so much range and the bond that she has throughout the entire movie with all these different characters and women it's a sight to behold and that's another thing this felt like a sisterhood it felt like a sisterhood it felt like watching best friends just living their lives but they just happen to kill people and train all day to be <coughs> in the military and that's the thing i just love the fact of every character is different every character is different and even though you don't get their backstories you know their personalities you know who they are and it was so it was so good man it was honestly so good and one thing to also say as well thank god yeah they didn't do none of this the message and when i say the message like to push this narrative because it's an all-female military or all-female cast it didn't go overboard to where it's like oh women good men bad women can do everything and all the men are incompetent no it was a case of where you had good men and bad men you had good women bad women more importantly these were just people they were not like weird caricatures of people that you think should be there they were just people and that's one thing which i love because again they didn't try to push no message out there the only message they really tried to give was that uh, at the end when John Boyega gives like his speech and I thought this is a love letter to all black people and primarily Africans this is a love letter to us to say that we are more than what we may see and it's our time to rise up and I was like uh, I'm for that 100% I am for that 100% all of that being said let me go into the bad I ain't got no bad for this film I'm telling you straight the only bad but then again it was very short-lived the accents everybody's accent eh, not so much you know what I'm trying to say because again it's very hard for you 
to pull off an accent if you're not from the country and let's be real when it comes to americans they're not really the best at doing accents and as well because the cast is very diverse in terms of their background not everybody's from the same place so you have people from west africa you have people from the caribbean you have people from south africa and you have people from east africa so again it's going to be a bit hard to get like the right dialect that's like my only negative but again i got over it very quickly like within like the first 30 minutes i kind of let that go and i was just there for the ride so that's literally it that's the only bad that i can really think of if i'm being honest with you now my verdict this film is gonna get a 9 out of 10 for me it was everything and more i definitely say that it is the best film that i have watched of 2022 as it stands it's the best film i watched from 2022 i was not bored at all i literally wanted more and when certain people like died oh man i felt it in my soul man i felt it in my soul because again i knew i knew who these characters were and i really i was really rooting for them that's my verdict man nine out of ten i would definitely go to watch this film again i would highly recommend it as well those are my thoughts and my opinions guys please let me know what you thought like always sound off in the comments if you've watched the film and if not you need to take yourself to go watch it enjoy it but like always please like comment subscribe and i will catch you at the next masquerade peace